Hey, this is Russ. I got something new to show you guys. Take a look at this. Yeah, yeah we've got it on the rack. Let me show you this. <laughs> nice, huh? Yeah, this rack is complimentary to Magic Cycle. Here, take a look at this. There they are. Now you all know that I've been uh, stuck in the same general areas because I had no way of transporting my, my bikes. Well, hey, that's gonna change for this coming year. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy to have this. Thank you, Magicycle, for sending this to me. Now they asked me whether I could do a review of the uh, Magicycle rack and I told them that I didn't have a hitch. We have a hitch now, <laughs> let me show you. Yeah, the hitch is down there. So I had that installed on Saturday. Today is Sunday as I'm doing this video. This video should come out on Tuesday. And uh, yeah, I asked the gentleman whether I needed electrical work done too. And he said, on this uh, CRV, probably not. Because as you can see, the, uh, the rear tail lights are up on top. So it's pretty good. I think the only thing I need to do is I need to get a uh, license plate mount to put on the, uh, the rack. Probably have to put one over here. Just move the license plate there. Of course, as you can see, I've blacked out the, uh, or whited out the license plate for you. But yeah, I'll need a mount for that. But I think uh, most people can see when we're stopping, there's a center uh, stop uh, light, of course, and of course, and then there's uh, the ones on the left and the right. So I have the Magicycle Ocelot Pro and the Magicycle Cruiser Wannabe Pro. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I have uh, basically most of the parts for the Pro, but it started out as a standard cruiser. And you might notice too that I've removed the, uh, the battery on the bikes before mounting them. So the battery is off of it. That just makes it uh, lighter in weight. It makes it a little bit easier um, for the uh, transport too. So I decided I'm gonna do this a little bit backwards. I'm showing you what it looks like when it's on. Then I'm gonna show you how to take it off. And then I'm gonna show you how to put the bikes back on and then I could ride back home. It's kind of cold today. It's about 38 degrees right now. But uh, yeah, this is a nice rack. It's not expensive either, in comparison to some other racks. Magicycle has it on sale right now at $399. So now of course you, you have to buy a, a hitch. If your car doesn't have a hitch, you have to buy a hitch to put onto your car. And um, I, I think in total, my hitch with tax and labor and everything was about 300 and $325, something like that. And then of course, uh, if you buy the, the rear rack, it's about $399. So yeah, there's a little bit of uh, expense there. So I, I'm lucky because they're sending me the, the rack for the review, but uh, I did have to put the hitch on that. That's an expense to me, but it's on my car. So yeah, this is actually my wife's car. <laughs> it's a Honda. This is a uh, 2011 Honda CRV. And they had some questions whether it would actually fit on there because it's an older vehicle. But when I brought it in to ask them whether it would fit on this car or not, they went underneath, they took a look at it and they said that the, uh, the rust is very minimal <laughs> underneath. I mean, you're talking car from 2011. And they said, yeah, you can put the hitch on there. So what he told me was the hitch will handle 350 pounds uh, up and down. And the, uh, the towing of that hitch could do 3,500 pounds. So if I wanted to tow a boat or something like that, <laughs> I could do it. And uh, the rack itself will handle 145 pounds. Now, these two bikes, of course, as you know, are not lightweight. Uh, with the batteries, I think, I don't, I don't know the exact weights of these things, but they're a little bit over 70 pounds uh, per bike, something like that. I think the Cruiser always feels a little heavier, but the Ocelot Pro is pretty heavy as well. So you need to make sure that you don't exceed 145 pounds. Now, one thing that I noticed on the website, and I had a discussion with this with Magicycle, is uh, there's a requirement that says you need to remove your front baskets and also your fenders. Yeah, I didn't do that, <laughs> okay? And the reason they wanna do that is for this. Let me show you what I did. This right here, this vertical thing here, they want it as close as possible to the, uh, 
to the um, to the fork. Now, if you have a fender, it doesn't compress. You know, if you compress it, you might break your fender, and you may not get a good uh, lock on there. So here's what we did. I took some packing foam that came with the bike, all right, cut it down, slid it into the fender to give this more rigidity. Same thing here on the uh, on the cruiser, you see. So what I did is I, I put the bikes on, then I slid in this foam. And that gives the rigidity now needed to be able to put this here. You don't need to take off the, uh, the basket. After talking to them, they said that's not as critical. It's more critical about this. I think this fixes it, okay? Now, if you want to do it exactly the way they tell you, uh, then you're going to have to remove your front fenders every time you put your bike on here. But I think this fixes the problem. This gives a plenty of, um, plenty of rigidity if you put this in here. Just look at some of your packing foam, okay? And if you don't have foam, go ahead and use some, uh, maybe some, put an old t-shirt or something in there. <laughs> put a rag or something. But this actually fixes it, okay? All right, let me show you real quickly how we take this off. And then when we're done, I'll show you how we put it back on. And then I'll show you a little bit about the, uh, the rack too when the, when the bikes are off, stay tuned. All right, let me see if I can show you how this is done. I think the first thing you need to do is you gotta recognize that there's a couple of uh, mounting points. Right here, there's a strap here, and over on this side, there's a strap here as well. So uh, these need to be removed, and then this also needs to be removed as vertical, okay? So uh, a couple of ways you can do this. You can take the vertical off first and then unstrap it, or you can unstrap it and take the vertical part off. Uh, I'm gonna unstrap it first. So you just push this in and pull on the straps. That removes the strap. And I'm just gonna flip it to the back here. And for this strap, I'm just gonna push the release on this. This is just a nylon strap. Throw it to the side. So the only thing supporting right now is this vertical, and there's a push button here. If you push the button, you can raise it, you see, and lower it down. Now to take the bike off, here's what I suggest you do. Do it in stages, all right? Take the rear part off first, and then take the bottom. If you try to lift the whole bike, you're lifting the entire weight of the bike. So here's how I do it. I just lift the back end, Set it down, okay? Then holding the rear brake with your right hand, it's off. That's pretty fast, right? Let's do the other one. Let me move this to the side. As you can see, the, uh, the packing foam is here. <laughs> All right, we'll do it again. Let me see if I can back up the camera a little bit. Maybe it's a little easier to see. There you go. Let's take off this one. So the same thing here again. I'm gonna remove the straps first. All right, this one's just a nylon strap with a uh, kind of a push button locking mechanism on it. Okay, throw that down there. Same thing with this one. This one doesn't seem to lock as well. I don't know why this uh, locking me mechanism isn't as good. Here, here's what I would suggest. Since this one doesn't lock as well, get another couple of one of these type of straps and then strap it down better. Okay. And we can take the foam off of here too at this point if you want. Um, we'll have to unlock this vertical. The vertical's in the back here now. Pull this one off. Now again, at this point, the bike is loose since there's nothing supporting it. Once you, uh, let me get a better look here. Once you remove this, the bike is essentially by itself. Now this one's a little tougher because uh, getting it off is a little harder. Um, if you lifted the entire thing, so it's a lot of weight here. So I think what I'm gonna do, let me do this. I have the other bike in the way. 
Yeah, I'm gonna support it a little bit again with this. Let me move this other bike. I know you can't see it. <laughs> move this arm out of the way as well. And we'll release it one more time. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it backwards here, trying to keep it from falling off of it. Again, holding the rear brake. And we're off. <laughs> so here's what I wanna show you. When you're done with this, you're not gonna leave it down to this position because it's gonna get in the way. So what you do is right over here, I'm gonna pull this pin, all right, remove that pin. And from this point, let me, uh, Move this one forward here. There we go. So as you can see, I've now moved that section up and that's good for storage. So it doesn't stick out quite as much. And it's just to reverse the other way when you're ready to put it back on. So let's just bring this back down and I'll go ahead and remount the, uh, the bikes. Okay. If the bikes were on there, you needed to open up your rear back. It would be the same thing. And it will tilt down. And when it's tilted down like this, you can actually open up your, the rear of your car. Okay. So once you have it locked in position, you want to put this back on there. All right, to do this, I've got to move this arm out in this area, all right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically walk it through the same way as I took it off. I'm going to walk it through here. I think this is actually easier as a two-man job than a one-man job. If you have a second person helping you, I think it'd be a lot easier. Lifting this up is hard. So I think the best thing is, again, squeeze the rear brake. Bring it up here. Roll forward. Let's get the... Uh... So grab the, uh, the rear rack here. So if you get it uh, off the thing, then you got a problem. <laughs> there we go. All right. To hold this in place, swing this up, push it down. Again, we need to lock this in place. So I'm gonna get the foam one more time, slide it underneath to give it the rigidity, push down, it's locked in place. All we need to do at this point is put the straps on. The instruction manual shows you how the proper way to uh, lace the straps. Same thing for the back end here. As you know, this is a rubber strap. Slide that through, put it through the mechanism, lock it in place. All right, that's one. Let's get the other one. Same thing again. I'm gonna move this one out. And I wanna make sure that the uh, 
the positioning of the of the uh, pedals don't scratch up the other bike. Just stick this up there. So same thing again. I'm going to put the front tire up first. Again, holding the rear brake, it locks it in place, lifts it up. And I think I need to go a little bit forward. Do it again, lock it in place, lift it up. Put it in the, in the wheel cradle, lift up the rear end, stick it on here. We'll take the uh, foam, stick it inside the fender, throw the vertical part up. We want to get as close as we can to the front fork. Now we're locked in place. All right, let me give you a different angle here. All right, so let's lock this in. Slide that in, slide this in. That's locked, let's go over here. Pull down, and we're locked. <laughs> All right, there you have it. So coming up for next year as we're going riding we're going to have an opportunity to go to a lot more places now because of this so anyways if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so take a look at the magic cycle site and you'll see uh you can get one of these racks for 399 dollars make sure you have a good hitch talk to you guys next time